If you have a better credit score, should you get better car insurance rates? It's the Debt Free in 30 Roundtable. Scott Terry is here and we're joined by a first time guest starting right now. This is Debt Free in 30. Here's your host, Doug Hoyes. It's the Roundtable. Let's meet the panel. Guest number one, who are you? My name is Maureen Parent and I'm a licensed insolvency trustee in the Canada office with Hoyce Michaelis and Associates. I actually knew that because it's on my on my card here. I didn't. I had yeah. no idea who so showed. So there you go. And, and <laughs> nice I'm, to meet you, Maureen. I'm joined nice here to by, meet you too, Scott. <laughs> by Scott Terrio, who has been on this show many times before. So I like to put our first time guests on the spot, Maureen. So uh, first question, are you an avid follower of the New Brunswick Insurance Board? Of course. I, I knew you were. I knew you were. Now, <laughs> Who isn't? Yeah, exactly. Now, of course, you're lying, but I, I appreciate you said it with confidence. So that was good. So you're going to do you're going to do fine here in the world of podcasts. Now, I, of course, do read the d- decisions of the New Brunswick Insurance Board every day, and I will never forget the decision that was rendered on, uh, let's see, November 24th, 2020 for hearings that happened in uh, September and October of 2020. It was an application for a rate increase brought by the TD Home and Auto Insurance Company. And I'm going to put a link to it in the show notes. It's 17 pages long. I'm sure everyone will want to read it. Obviously, they went to the insurance board because they wanted a rate increase and they wanted to introduce a client assessment, which, of course, well, as we're going to discuss today, relies on the credit score information of the insured. So, Scott Terrio, why do you think an insurance board would want to do something, or why would the insurance company want to do something like this? Well, I'm certain it's because of the very unbiased, perfectly rational assumption that crappy drivers must also, in fact, have bad credit scores. Yes, and and I'm pretty sure it's because they think they can make more money somehow. I think that's part of it How by doing yeah. this, yeah. So yeah. the obvious implications, as you just said, is that if you have a low credit score, they think you're a higher risk. Right. So they want to charge you more on your insurance. So let's step back here and you know think this through here. So Maureen, quick review. What is a credit score? Didn't you just do a course on this? I did. Very good. Very good. She See, this is what a good guest does, Scott. They plug all my courses right and in. They the, right the start. Yeah, and they watch them. So <laughs> courses.hoys.com. You can all go there. Because you get nothing from it if you don't there watch it. There you go. It. You got to watch it or it's it, critical. it does you no good. So... So yes, uh, we we just released that, I guess it was last month, um, a whole credit rebuilding course. It's free. Sign up now, courses.hoys.com. So back to the question, give us the two, two sentence summary of what is a credit score. A credit score is a number between 300 and 900, and it's based on your payments, utilization, and other factors. Bunch of factors. And who calculates it, Maureen? Everyone. Equifax, TransUnion, the banks. Everyone has their own way of calculating it, which is part of the problem. There's no consistency. Okay. And is that the biggest problem then, Scott, the consistency? No, it's that those are for-profit businesses. And so uh, you're not, you know, this is not an academic endeavor. They're not, they're not out there in the, in, in this, in the, in the ether, you know, calculating credit scores out of benevolence. Um, It's, it's a, it's a money driven business. They sell information. uh, They sell your information to, uh, to whoever is looking, lenders traditionally. Of course, today we're going to find out it's not necessarily yeah. lenders, but um, but yeah, it's just, it's not it's not an unbiased uh, thing at all, really. Any other problems you see, Maureen? Well, correlation is not causation. Wait, the that's true. That's true. Um, Sorry. Possibly until now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, the the other I mean, the other big problem is privacy that you I mean, you just said it, Scott, that yeah. they are taking our uh, they're taking our data and yeah. giving it to people who perhaps we did not originally know that it was going to. Right. I'm sure there's no clause on page seven from when you signed up eight years ago for this saying we will not do this. Uh, we will not sell these to anybody who is not a lender. Yeah. And so. Exactly. I mean, you think a credit score has to do with lending. Is a credit score good as a health verifier? You know, I mean, someone who's on the brink of bankruptcy, have you ever seen this where they've had a high credit score? No, 820. Yeah. Hap- happens all it the happens time. Happens quite, quite, quite a lot. Like if you've never missed a payment and okay, yeah, your score might get dragged down by the fact that you've got a ton of debt. But if you don't have tons of debt and you've never missed a payment, you're probably walking in with a good score. You just can't do it anymore. 
And so does that have anything to do with my ability as a driver? It shouldn't. And that's kind of Maureen's point. Correlation versus causation. Well, okay. Uh, they're not correlated, right? Like, isn't, isn't that kind of, kind of what we're saying? So, okay. It, correlation ahead. is not causation. You can't just say because two things have happened and they're related, one causes the other. Yeah. Now, obviously the insurance company in this decision at the New Brunswick Insurance Board presented all sorts of data to say, well, yes, in fact, it is correlated. And they say, we're not going to be raising insurance rates if you have a bad credit score. We're going to be giving you a discount if you have a good credit score. So that all sounds happy and joyous and, and wonderful. So what then is the problem that we see? So I'm just going to, I'm just going to throw this out. Scott, why don't you start? Yeah. Give me a problem. Then I'll throw it to Maureen. Well, so if you go to, if you go to your, if your insurance company says, okay, we're, we've looked at your credit score and uh, we, we, uh, we got a problem here and you say, well, what's the problem? And, and, and why, and wh why do you, why are you even asking me this? Credit scores are not necessarily current, right? Um, they're based on the inputs that have come in from lenders, whomever, over the past, nobody knows how long. And, you know, you might, you might be more, your, your score now might be better than it was six months ago, which would therefore, presumably in the long run, save you an awful lot more on your insurance that they're trying to jack up on you. That's one problem. Yeah, a credit score is not in real time. It's not like a heart rate monitor. It's whatever information they've got at the yep. system and how it gets gets accumulated. Okay, so there's problem number one. They're yep. setting my insurance rate based on something that may be out of date. Maureen, give me another problem. The one that we just talked about, privacy issues. So That's definitely an issue because if, um, let's say the automobile insurance companies are able to get access to your credit score, now you have another place that could have a privacy breach. Well, I don't think that would ever happen. Have we ever had a privacy breach? With I'm going to shut up now. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> On that one. This <laughs> is what gets Terrio really freaked out. Yeah. Well, and, and of course, I believe Equifax did have a privacy breach. Thank you for doing that. A, taking that off me, A Doug. year or two. I can turn his microphone down when he when he starts to get all, all yeah. hyped up. But, but yeah, clearly, the more information is out there, the more people who can get it. So that yeah. kind of worries me. Yeah. Okay. Scott Terrio. Also errors, right? The typic, typically, and this will be no different than what's always happened with lenders, right? Like if you're getting a worse rate because there are errors on your credit report that shouldn't be there, uh, and if you've ever tried to correct them, it's it's a, let's just call it a prohibitive system. They have a dispute resolution mechanism, but it ain't fun or easy. So you could again be faced with, well, if the insurance company is just looking at the report, right? They don't care that you think there are errors. That's what the report says. Equifax or TransUnion said this. And so therefore we're going to charge you more and that's going to cost you more money. So Maureen, yes or no question for you. When you're working with clients, have you ever seen a credit report with an error on it? <laughs> yes, yeah. I have. Yes. And would you say it happens all the time? Uh, I see it. Yeah. Fairly regularly, yeah. there are errors. And Absolutely. In fact, it's daily, folks. Yes, it's yeah. daily. In <laughs> fact, it is rare that we see a credit report that doesn't have an error on it. Now, some of the errors are innocuous enough. So I've been working with one of my clients over the last couple of days. Her address is wrong because she moved in the last year and a half. Kind of back to your point, Scott, about information being out of date. Yeah, Her time. employment information isn't current because she started a new job a year and a half ago. Yeah. The longer you live at a certain place or are at a certain job, you build up history, which increases your credit score. Well, if they have an old address and employer information for yeah. you, it's going to be, you're going to potentially have and a credit score. And that happens a lot. The address and the employer thing is, is pretty yeah, Happens all the time. Yeah. And the nice thing is that's an easy thing to fix. Um, and if you go to courses.hoys.com, we'll tell you how to do it. But that is a classic example of an error that can lower your credit score. And as a result, you might end up paying higher for car insurance. And right. that's that's a simple error. We're not talking about things like, you know, creditors reporting incorrectly because that yeah. would be be a whole other show. So, OK, so that was errors. Uh, Maureen, back to you. I think that's where I'm at because I've lost track now. Well, we were, all, we were also going to talk about people like seniors who may not have um, who who may not be playing the game uh, just because they haven't been in the in in the credit market much lately because they I know they built up equity over their lives. They're retired. They haven't been doing that. 
well, they're potentially going to pay more because their score is lower because they aren't playing the, the credit game. Because right. credit scores are about playing the credit game. Yep. Right? Which which we are not in favor of. But yes, that's exactly and So that's true. not fair. I mean, if, you know, what if. Same with newcomers. Yeah. Right. They won't have a credit score either. Because their history is. Ex- yep. And yeah. that's one of the other inputs you were mentioning before, other than trans, uh, transaction history and credit utilization. Well, one of the other minor ones is. 15% or something like that, I think is credit history. Yeah. And right. so, you know, Maureen, you're talking about newcomers who are at the, at one end of the spectrum, they don't have any history because they're new to Canada, for example, or maybe they just turned 18 and have never borrowed. And then Scott, you're talking about the other end of the spectrum, which is the yeah. senior who paid off their mortgage 20 years ago. They don't have, you know, they're not, they, they pay debit for everything. They're paying for cash. They have no yeah. credit history anymore because they don't need it. They got cash in the bank. Well, both of those parties could have lower credit scores as a result. And what if, here's a scenario, say you are a newcomer like Maureen mentioned, right? You've only been here for, I don't know, a year or less. Right. Um, you, based on your driving record, which is what should drive driving insurance, car insurance, you might be all right because they don't have anything to negative to go on. They don't have a lot of history, but there's no accidents. But you could end up paying more just because now they're looking at your credit score, which is crappy because you haven't been here long. Mm-hmm. And you don't have the two lines of credit. And you're not playing the game and all that stuff. So that's not really fair. Yeah, and you're right. Ultimately, shouldn't my car insurance rates be based on my car driving history? Do I have a lot of accidents? And you're right. I'm a newcomer. I had a perfect driving record in my old country. Yeah. I have no dr- accidents here. Mm-hmm. But sorry, you get nailed as a result of right. uh, as a result of that. Yep. We get, we're coming up with a lot of problems. Maureen, keep it going. Give me another problem or issue with uh, using credit scores for determining car insurance rates. Well, recent events. There was a pandemic. And a Wait a lot minute, of a pandemic? Were, became unemployed I didn't and their credit pandemic. scores were negatively impacted. The, that, yeah, keep going. Sorry, that's unfair to then increase their automobile insurance because they're now unemployed and struggling to make ends meet. Through no fault of their own. Yep. And I am aware of the pandemic. Uh, well, there's a phrase, no fault, since we're talking insurance. <laughs> yeah. the <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, and 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 Scott and I have our, our masks here, and we actually both did a, a rapid COVID test before we before we started COVID. We should check the results here. Yep, we're good. So we're, uh, we're good. But yeah. but yeah, you're right. COVID is an example of uh, an unanticipated recent event, mm-hmm. but there's lots of other ones. Unemployment. Yep. You know, got separated, got divorced, got sick, whatever. And that can certainly temporarily impact your credit score. And then homeowners versus renters. You're going to get into that debate where, you know, if the tendency is that for homeowners to have higher credit scores because of all the supports and the, you know, it's just economically and financially sounder sometimes to be a homeowner when it comes to the kinds of things that are measured for credit scores, which aren't necessarily fair, but that's, and renters tend to get more penalized. And we see this all the time as well, because a high percentage of our, our clients uh, filing insolvencies are renters. Yeah, a massively high percentage. Yeah. I mean, it's over like the last year. homeowners years, are like negligible at this point. Yeah, it's been, or yeah, it's been 3% the last few months. It hasn't really gone above 5 or 6% in the last year, because if you've got a, a home and it's gone way up in value, you can just refinance and pay Don't off need your to credit see cards. Don't need to see us. Right. Well, does that mean you're a better driver? Uh, so now those yeah, folks are also going to get better insurance. Yeah. And it, driving yeah. a further economic wedge between the <laughs> haves and have. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, exactly. Am exactly I, right. Am I starting to? <laughs> well, we're, I'm going to give you guys the opportunity to tell me what you actually think of this. So the, the new Brunswick Insurance Board, the decision, and for those of you who are you know held in suspense here, they, surprise, surprise, approved the rate increase that TD Home and Auto Insurance was um, was asking for. It is currently, according to my notes, illegal to use credit score information to determine insurance rates in Ontario. Obviously, it is legal to use them in New Brunswick. So Maureen, first to you, when some insurance company in Ontario inevitably asks to use credit scores to determine insurance rates in Ontario, if you were to advise the government or the Insurance Board of Ontario, if there is such a thing on this particular issue, what would your advice be? What are your thoughts? Well, as you said, the Ontario government banned that use because it determined that credit score was not related to an insured risk. They deemed it to be unfair and not in the public interest. 
So I would certainly remind the Ontario government of that. Now, the insurers have used statistics to show that there's a correlation between how an insured manages their finances and the likelihood that they would make an insurance claim. And the insurer's um, numbers so, really is, fell in their own favor? That's a shock. Sorry? I said the insurer's statistics fell in their own favor. That surprises me. Doesn't, yeah, doesn't I know, it, it surprise you, Doc? It, <laughs> yeah. it I would me. remind you. Oh, sorry, Doug. No, go ahead. I would remind the Ontario government that correlation is not causation, as I mentioned earlier. Statistics are not cold, hard facts. They are used to show that an observation was based in fact. But you can take opposing facts and have statistics that support both. Um, people with good credit have car accidents, but they also tend to have access to deal with a lot of those issues outside of filing an insurance claim. Because who wants to file an insurance yeah, it's claim? Very good, very good point. Yeah, there, that, actually. that yeah. is a very good point. Yeah. So, Like if, in other words, I don't want to pay my deductible and, I, and I, do, do I really want my rates to go up because of that accident? Well, I'm just going to, can money make this problem go away? Like they used to say yeah. at the, at the, when you got to the front of the line at a nightclub. Yep. Uh, oh, you yep. Can't, I can't get in. Can money fix this? Yep. I think money yeah. can fix that too, actually. Yeah, that that's an excellent point. So I've had a minor fender bender yeah. and let's say I'm completely at fault. Yep. Because I was listening to the podcast while driving, which is what a lot of people despite do, of no course, fault. Yeah, despite no fault. And so I say to the other driver, look, this was clearly my fault. Um, I can see that there's a little bit of a dent in your fender. What do you think it's going to cost you to fix that? 500 bucks? Okay, here you go. Here's 500 bucks. Give me the auto body uh, estimate and yeah, we'll, just I'll get, just, we'll just both get out of here. I'll just take care of it. So as a result, because I have lots of cash, my insurance rates stay lower, but that probably means, and this is your point, Maureen, I've probably got a pretty high credit score too. Yep. So, okay, doesn't that prove the insurance company's point though, that people with higher credit scores are probably also therefore wealthier and therefore they do have fewer insurance claims because they can just make it go away on their own. Aren't they right? Well, I'd prefer the, the, the you know, I'd prefer not to have the use of the word probably there. Mm -hmm. You know, I would like it to be a little more scientific than that if I'm going to pay more money, yep. I guess. is like I, we can all see what they want to do. Yeah. You know, like let's. Let's call out the skunk at the wedding here. Like, you know, they are not doing this to try and make less money. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, like, follow the money as with everything else. And we do in this industry all the time is, you know, uh, what are they after and who is who is helping them do it? And I just I just see this as a very a, an incipient, sinister uh, move. And and then I wonder, well, how much broader is this going to get? If it's if credit scores are now being shopped and used by the insurance companies, you know, what next? Is it going to be Bell? Is it going to be like, what are you going to well, going to see from this? And they're already used by landlords. Mm -hmm. A yeah. landlord is not actually lending you money; mm -hmm. they are lending you a place to live. But yeah. credit scores are huge when it comes to renting, especially a place. in competitive markets. Like, yeah, because if because if there's if there's 20 people lined up at the door for the apartment, which story we just heard mm -hmm. before we came in here, uh, you know, and eight of them have bad credit, that's 12 that are getting the apartment, not 20, right? So well, you're automatically trimmed right out of that. And that's been happening in Toronto for a long time. Well, and even if a bunch of people have good credit, but somebody has really good credit, well, then they're the one who gets the apartment. They're the ones who's able to live closer to work. Despite never having missed a, a, a payment, a rent a payment in your life. Right. And I guess that's kind of what this all comes down to, <clears throat> back to Maureen's comment, correlation and causation, that sure, you can make statistics say anything, right? Like it's- That's it's, called marketing. Yeah, absolutely. So whatever the numbers show, I can interpret them however, uh, however you want. I mean, we just finished an election and half the people are going to say, oh, this is what the result means. And the other half will say, oh, no, it means something completely opposite. Well, they're both going from the same data. They're just coming up with a, a completely different conclusion. So that is, to me, a significant concern about all this, that the insurance companies have been able to take the numbers and make it look like there's a, a causation here. Sure, there's a correlation. I'm sure you can correlate any two numbers. But is that really, uh, really what we want to be seeing? Well, and where does the law step in, right? I mean, obviously, you got a ruling from an Ontario 
uh, an Ontario or a New sorry, me, a provincial body. Yep. And and you know you could see that spreading um, once one happens. I mean these insurance companies are national mm-hmm. or international, and uh, I would think their lobbyists are going to be saying, "Hey, so Ontario is big market." Well, so let's talk about that then. So Maureen, let's assume that the Ontario insurance industry is lobbying the provincial government for this change. How would you advise the government then? Well, I I still think it's discriminatory. It's still unfair. We talked about this um, just earlier. The people with poor credit scores oftentimes are the low income, small business owners who are relying on lines of credit or people who had a great credit score until they had a major life change. So they lost their spouse, their health, their, um, their job. And now all of a sudden they're struggling and then you're going to increase their <clears throat> auto insurance premiums. Now they may not be able to have a car. They may, may not be able to find work or find better work to support their life. Like it's, it's just an extra burden on people who are already struggling and trying to improve their life. Yeah. And auto I, insurance I, is mandatory. We shouldn't yeah. punish them. Yes. Good point. Very good point, Maureen. Um, and, and along those lines, hopefully, um, and how is it to the benefit of society for this to happen? Like if we're talking to the government here, we're saying government, here's what I would tell you just because it benefits the insurance company. Like it's hardly protecting anyone out there on the roads. Okay. Realistically, or you could never prove it. Um, but how is it, how is it in the best interests of society for this to happen? Would be my question. Right. And I, and I think governments drift too far from that too often and it's big companies and it's, you know, you know, they all go to the same golf club together and like, you know, it's just, as I said, I, I used the term incipient, incipient a while ago, just because I like the word. That's a good word. Yeah. It's a great word. And uh, it has four syllables. It's short. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure how to spell it. My wife's no an idea. editor and she would love it. But um, but I think I think this gets to a little bit of the, we're on the greasy pole here where, you know, you got, you got an outfit that is collecting your information, selling it to people, and then those people are using it to, to charge you more money for things that are not... I don't think we call it uh, not necessarily unrelated. I think they're unrelated. Yeah, and and Maureen's right. It's mandatory. You have to have insurance. So therefore, why would you allow someone to do this when, as Maureen said, the people who are less fortunate uh, or who have been disadvantaged by things in society more financially are going to be the ones that pay the price on this? Yep, and she also used the term temporary change. Well, yeah, that's kind of what life is. I mean, if 2020 taught us nothing is that things can change pretty quickly, Mm -hmm. hopefully temporarily, but they do change. So if that's the case, then should someone be punished? Because once they raise your insurance rate, are they going to just lower it next year when things go back? Well, that was what I was going to ask. And I was going to use the example of, um, and this is going to be me arguing, for the insurance companies, which will show my magnanimity and my balance. But last year, a bunch of insurance companies reduced rates because people weren't driving and they just did it. I don't think they were even forced to do it. They just, I think they saw it as a competitive thing and they're like, okay, well, mine didn't and I made a big stink about it. But a bunch of people, a bunch of the companies actually did that. So therefore, okay, well, these are the guys that are now trying to get us to pay more because of our credit scores. Yes. And I think you're right. The reason that some of them lowered rates was because if one guy lowers rates, yeah. then the other... It wasn't you know, benevolent, no. but it was nice. Yeah, I'll, I'll go somewhere else then. And you're yeah. right. I guess what we all should have done was taken the insurance off our car for six months because it sat in the driveway and, and didn't move. So, so okay, Maureen, your, your advice to the government then is, yeah, no, you don't like this idea. It's something you want them to, to, to hold off on. Um, Scott, what's your advice to the government? I then? just think, again, remember who you are. You're the government. You're, you're not there to enrich companies. You're there to make sure that laws are drawn up or refused uh, based on the best, uh, what's best for society. And I just see a lot of people getting, uh, getting hurt by this through no fault of their own, really. There's that no, no fault. fault again. That's right. That's an insurance And it's not even pun. on the card. I know. It's the that's, third one. That's cool. Yeah. So, okay, Maureen, any final thoughts you have on anything to do with Credit scores, uh, car insurance, and everything we've we've talked about today. Well, another point is that the formula for credit scoring is confidential. 
So it is very hard for someone to know how to improve their score to make sure they get a better automobile insurance. The other point is that the, and this is shown with studies for house insurance, a lot of people don't understand how their credit score is impacting their house insurance. So then if you bring it in for automobile insurance and you're dealing with the disadvantage, maybe they're new to Canada and they don't understand properly or they're older and they have a hearing problem, but they're not understanding that their credit score is going to impact their automobile insurance. So not only do you have a confidential model that you don't know how to improve, you also don't fully understand how it's going to impact you and your automobile insurance. Yeah. And, and obviously that's one of the reasons we did the course was to kind of explain how all these things work, mm -hmm. but ultimately you're right. I'm being judged on something that I can't control and can't even adjust. And that's why you get all these people saying, oh, well, you should carry a balance in your credit card and you should do this and you just have 12 credit cards and all the rest of it. Okay. That may be, in fact, almost always is counterproductive advice. And now it's going to be a contributing factor to something that is, as Maureen said, mandatory. Yep. Yeah, so you don't even have a choice here. It's it you know really doesn't seem seem fair at all. So okay, Scott Terrio, what final comments do you have uh, on anything related to this topic? Well, I'll be repetitive if I say if I say anything else because I've said it now. But I I just want to say as a maritimer, I'm really upset that this originated yeah, in New Brunswick. Right. Um, guys, do better. Well, I mean, and it's you know. And if you, this kind of stuff's supposed to happen in Ontario, frankly, yeah. and then everybody else goes, oh, those jerks again, really? Well, and if you, uh, you know, if you look it's not at not supposed the, to originate uh, east and start moving. Yeah. West. And if you look at the stats, New Brunswick in particular and the Maritimes to a certain extent has a relatively high personal insolvency rate compared to places like Ontario. That's true. So I don't think it's a coincidence that they started with New yeah, Brunswick. That they started there. Because, okay, mm, yeah. we can... There's much more correlation and causation in New well, Brunswick. Well, and then probably their lawyers figured that if we can get this approved anywhere, it's there. And once yep. we get one, yep, thin edge the of the wedge. Rest of them are going to fall yep. in place. Yeah, yeah, because presumably the Ontario Insurance Board, it's you know, there's more to it, and it's obviously a bigger province and all the rest of it. So yeah, I think that was a a significant. And now factor. they'll be able to go there with a precedent yep. and say, look, "Hey they, guys, look what they did down east." Well, and and this precedent was set. Is, as I said, the decision was rendered in November of 2020. So we are coming up on the one year mark when this, uh, you know, became a thing. Mm -hmm. So what are the chances that in 2022 they can go to Ontario and say, look, we've now got a year's worth of history in New Brunswick. Yeah. The world didn't end. In fact, a lot of people have lower interest or lower car insurance rates as a result. It's all good. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, is the is the bigger concern. I, I'd point out, too, I didn't even know about this. And I wouldn't know about this if it wasn't for Debt Free and 30. Yep. Well, Maureen reads all these decisions. This is bringing, so, bringing information to the people. There you go. Well, and that's and, and this has been covered very lightly in the media, yeah. particularly the New Brunswick media, but not necessarily yeah. a national story. So, well, I will make my prediction now, now that we've covered this on this show, what do you want to bet that at some point in October, there are news stories in the mainstream media about this? So there you go, mainstream media. You've got some some free uh, free content. Just here. gave you yet another lead. Yet another lead, yet another story. So my concluding thought on this is I agree with what both of you have said. I totally agree. This This does not seem like an appropriate use of credit scores to me for all the reasons we talked about. Credit scores are often wrong. They're often out of date. They've got errors. They penalize potentially seniors, newcomers. Recent events can really whack them. And one little error two days before I'm going to get my car insurance and now all of a sudden I'm paying a whole lot more. So I am not a big fan of using this as a, a predictor or a, a factor in determining your credit scores. However, I will also say I am not the government. I don't control the insurance board. I'm not a government lobbyist. I don't know anybody in government. I can't phone them up and lobby. So I am going to operate under the assumption that at some point I'm going to get burned because the laws are going to be changed to help the big guy and, and not help me. So with that in mind, I'm going to only do, I'm going to focus on what I can control. So I'm going to say to myself, okay, whatever's happening in the world, I'm going to do what I can to have as good a credit score as I can have without being stupid about it. So I don't believe you should play the game and have 12 different credit cards and keep your utilization at, you know, 
8% and, and do all this crazy stuff. But I do believe you should once a year pull your credit report directly from Equifax and TransUnion, go through it and correct the obvious errors because that's mm -hmm. something that is within our power to do. Yep. And we already mentioned a few of them. Is your address up to date? Is mm -hmm. your employment information up to date? The creditors that are listed, if you've already paid one off and it's not reflected, well, send proof yeah. to the credit bureau and get them to, to pay it off. Mm -hmm. If you focus on things you can do, you can affect yourself, then I think you've got a much greater chance of having a better credit score and therefore not getting burned on uh, what you're paying for car insurance. That's sound. Makes sense. You agree with that, Maureen? You're, you're with me on that? Yep, I am. Excellent. Well, then on that note, we're going we're gonna to close the show before anybody starts disagreeing with me. So um, once again, Maureen Parent, who is coming to us from our Canada office. Did I pronounce Canada correctly there? You yes. did this time. Okay, yes. good. I didn't call it Canada. And uh, I pronounced parent correctly too. So so that's good. So anybody who is in the Ottawa region, obviously you work very closely with Shannon in our, in our Ottawa office as well. Maureen, yes. happy to uh, talk to him. And of course, we're doing everything over Zoom. So if you live anywhere in Ontario, Maureen's happy to chat with you. Scott Terrio, I believe this is the first time you and I have been in the same room since March 17th, 2020. St. Patrick's correct? Day. St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. 2020. So the world might be a better place for that. Yeah, I don't probably. Know, but, uh, <laughs> probably keeping us apart is probably a good thing. My but, wife uh, always asks me, when you're with Doug, you guys both talk at the same time. Yes, like, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, we yes. do. That's exactly how we mm. do it. So good to see you here in the studio good in Kitchener again. And uh, to both of you, thank you very much for being here. That is our show for today. As I said, we do have a course on credit scores, credit rebuilding, courses.hoys.com, totally free. And that's the reason we put that kind of information out because there are some simple things you can do that can actually save you real money in the future. So please check that out. If you're listening or watching on YouTube, please like, subscribe, notification buttons, you know all how to do it. And of course, we're available on all prod podcast uh, applications as well. So until next week, thanks for listening. I'm Doug Hoyes. That was Debt Free in 30. <laughs>